Today, Zwift start rolling out game release version 1.47 across all supported platforms in a staged approach. So if you don't have the update right now, you may have it in a day or two. Now, in addition to a number of fixes and enhancements, there are two major updates with this release that I'll be covering in this video. Starting off with number one, a new game launcher for Mac and PC, which allows you to defer updates for a later time. And number two, native Apple Silicon support for the M series machines. All right, straight to the details about the new launcher. Game launcher version 1.1.10 now allows you to defer updates. So if you're logging in at the last minute for a race, a ride, an event that doesn't allow late join, you may not miss out on that ride. You can click on the button there that says update later, which will allow you to jump straight into the game and ride on. Now, obviously there's a potential there for mismatched game clients causing a few issues, but I'd rather have those than missing out on a ride. So this is a good thing. Uh, according to the documentation on this, the game will completely update once you've completed your rider activity and exited, where the update is then staged and applied. So this is definitely a welcome update that people have been asking for for a long time, especially those on slower connections. Uh, the launcher itself should update automatically on your machine. If not, head over to Zwift.com, scroll down to downloads and select Mac or PC and installing the latest installer or launcher from there. On to significant update number two for this game release, and that is native Apple Silicon support for M-series processors, meaning the M1, M1 Max, M2. These will no longer have to run the Intel version of Zwift and an emulator, which has its own overheads. Zwift will now run natively on the machines, which they list here gives faster frame rates, improved graphic performance, less overheating, and potentially longer battery life when not plugged into power. Now this update did sneak into game version 1.46, but did need to be manually started. With game version 1.47 and the updated launcher, the correct version of Zwift will run on the machine and you'll be good to go. Now the most notable visual difference here is Rider Shadows in-game. Let's have a look at the in-game experience or differences and some frame rate comparisons. Okay, two side-by-side -side tests here of very similar environments, different times of day, so the environment shadows are a little bit different between the two, but over there on the left, we have the Intel executable running on my MacBook M1 Max, and over there on the right, the Apple Silicon version of Zwift. Now, these are both running at over 60 frames a second, which is what YouTube's going to be limited to, so there won't be any difference there with the smoothness that you're seeing. Graphic detail level, again, both the same. Swift does select the high graphic profile at this point in time for the N1 Max. But where the key difference is, is in the rider shadows. Can't really see them too much from there. They are definitely notable though when you are on the bike. It's much easier to tell the time of day. Okay, here we are, and you can see there, over on the right, looks a little bit more natural, being able to tell where the sun is located, rather than just a slight darkening, I guess, under the riders every now and then. So I guess, in this instance, full credit to Apple for having an emulator that runs so well for a non-native executable. All right, as we come around the corner here, we'll jump into some side view of the rider. All righty, as things line up, and again, different times of the day, so the sun is coming from a different angle. But over there on the right, looking good with the shadows. And I'm not sure if it's just me, but it looks a little smoother on the right, less jerky. Now as a bonus round, I thought it would be interesting to put my gaming PC that I use as my main Zwifting machine over there on the left, up against the new Apple Silicon version of Zwift with this side by side. Now over there on the left, Zwift is running in the ultra profile. So there is a little bit more detail there than over there on the right. Zwift with the Apple Silicon defaulting to the high graphics profile. However, side by side, there's really not much in it. Even when this is blown up to the big screen, they were pretty close. Okay, so that's the visuals covered and some side-by-sides. Let's dig a little deeper into those frame rates and any improvements that can be seen there with this new update. Jumping over to Zwiftalyzer.com for some further analysis of the frame rates and differences between the two versions of Zwift. Firstly, the Intel version of Zwift running on the Apple M1 Max. 
The menus there start off at 120 frames, and as I ride along with the pace part, now things drop down a little bit, averaging 85 frames per second. Resolution, 2160, which indicates it's the 4K version of Zwift that's running. And do note, the graphic profile is set to high. We can't change that. That's automatically selected in Zwift. Hopefully we see that bumped up to Ultra, because looking at the performance of the Apple Silicon version, things are a lot better. So again, high profile, automatically selected, resolution 4K, and the average frames per second, 114. Only let down by this section through here, where I was doing some screen recording. So aside from that there, this thing just sails along at about 120 frames per second, which is probably the limitation of the refresh rate on the M1 Max that I was using. So there's no question about it, the frame rates are greatly improved and the graphics performance are also better using the Apple Silicon version of Zwift on this Apple M1 Max. Let's just hope we see Zwift update this profile from high to ultra in the near future, because there's a lot more they could be squeezing out of this game with this processing power. So there it is, the two significant updates in this game release. One to the game launcher with those deferred updates and two, native Apple Silicon support for M-series processors. A welcome addition to those of us with those machines. Now there are a number of other miscellaneous updates and enhancements. I'll put a link in the video description below for your reference if you wanna go check those out. As always, if you found this informative, give it a thumbs up, hit subscribe to be across new videos on this channel and thanks for watching.